experience the fast pace, hard checking of any hockey as the league's top stars battle towards the Stanley Cup play. And with just one phone call, you can bring this exciting matchup into your home for only five. Home team sports subscribers already home team sports subscribers already receive this event as part of their monthly programming package. To order this event, call. Grudge match of the year is coming. Arch rivals Ray Boom Boom Mancini and Hector Macho Camacho go head to head for the WBO Junior Waterweight Championships. Plus a superstar undercard featuring heavyweight contender George Foreman. Mancini versus Camacho. Twelve rounds of explosive action presented by Schlitz Malt Liquor. Top event brings you there live at ringside. Monday, March 6th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. Check your local listings for details on the world's finest cars. And you can get Pirellis at Merchants Tire and Auto Centers. Merchants will start mounting your Pirellis in 29 minutes or less. No long waits and no extra charge for custom wheels. So imagine the traction you'll get with Pirelli P77s and imagine how fast you'll get them. Thank you. At Merchants Tire and Auto Center. Service that you trust. Guaranteed. Merchants Tire and Auto Center. In the Tidewater area, you know the Henry Johnson Tire and Auto Centers. And in Durham, you know the Rigsby Tire and Auto Centers. Well, they're all part of the Merchants Group, where you can get service that you trust, guaranteed. West Unseld Washington Bullets. Going for the tie. Do you have this in the yellow? George and Company, a real selection for big and tall. Capitals meet uh, the intensity up a notch or two, and tonight no difference. Here at the Capitol Center, a sellout crowd, and they were entertained. An outstanding first period of play. Unfortunately for Capitol fans and for the Washington Capitals, they trail 1-0 on a goal by Dave Hannon, one of the few scoring opportunities for the Penguins. One period into the book, still two periods to go. And welcome back, Jeff Rimmer, with you, and our pleasure to welcome back. And it's been a while since we've had a chance to visit with Capitals general manager David Poyle. David, pretty good first period of hockey at both ends. Barrasso, except exceptionally sharp tonight. Well, it sure was. Uh, you know, again, it probably sounds like an old refrain, but uh, the divisional games are on the horizon here at, as we get into the latter part of the season. And uh, we've got, I think, eight more after tonight of our remaining 14 games. And uh, this is where it's going to be all uh, tied up as far as whether we're going to have first, second, third, or fourth place here in, in our division. And we've, we've got to start making a little bit of an impact in our division. That certainly has been a little bit of our Achilles heel so far this season is that we really haven't done too well against the uh, our divisional uh, opponents, and uh, certainly the Penguins are a team that we've uh, had uh, trouble beating this year. 301 350 7852 is the number. Any questions or comments for the Capitals general manager? You're certainly welcome to join us. A couple of quick questions, David. Uh, number one, certainly with a trading deadline fast approaching and all kinds of rumors circulating around the league, what's the latest from a Capitals perspective? Do you expect uh, to make any moves before? Of the trading deadline on Tuesday? Well, as I always do, I'm trying to get in contact with uh, just about everyone. I think it's uh, helpful to see exactly what everybody's looking for, what they think their strengths are, what they think their weaknesses are. Uh, we certainly could be open-minded if uh, something comes along. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a real tough call at the, this time of year. You, you go basically, in our case, with uh, uh, the group of players that we have now for 65-plus games, and then if you're going to make a, you know, a, a minor change, uh, adding depth or one thing, that's, uh, you know, that's one thing. If you're going to get into the heart of your lineup and make a major trade well you know that's certainly another case and uh, you know I think you have to think long and hard of doing that but I think the main thing in this exercise in this uh, last three or four days before the trading deadline is to make sure that uh, you touch bases with everybody and you find out what is available in case you want to make that move. For an overall perspective do you think there'll be a lot of activity uh, between now and Tuesday? Well traditionally there there usually is and it's uh, sort of like the domino theory as soon as somebody makes a deal and kind of picks up uh, momentum and everybody gets jealous I guess and wants to get into the action but uh, you know I noticed in you know talking to you know a lot of people today it's like well you know I'm talking to a few clubs and uh, I gotta wait till so-and-so gets back to me and it's it's almost like uh, we all want to be put under the gun and you know waiting to right up to the deadline which is uh, Tuesday so 
I don't see a lot of action, not necessarily this weekend, but uh, Monday and Tuesday will certainly be the key. Very quickly, a very positive announcement made by the Capitals tonight. Uh, you've signed your number one draft choice. Is there any chance that we might see Reggie Savage after Victoriaville sideline from the playoffs in the Quebec Major Junior League? Well, that's not the reason why we signed him. We, we obviously signed him uh, because of why we drafted him and uh, what lies ahead in the future. I think we've got to be real careful how we look at and treat our younger players, Reggie, and all others. I mean, you've got to remember he's just 19. Uh, you know, physically, he's got... Uh, a long way to go, uh, uh, maturity-wise, both on and off the ice, how he, he handles himself. Uh, and what we're trying to do is expose him to different situations, like training camp this year, bringing him down today, put him in front of the press. Uh, he himself is playing at a high level in, uh, in a key position on his team in Victoriaville. He played on the World's Junior Championship team. So these are all sort of stepping stones to getting to that point. But uh, again, I, I know at training camp, uh, he'll be playing amongst all our, our top players, and he can do the job. We'll welcome him here next year. Let's go to Baltimore for our first call. And Neil, your question or comment? Hello, Neil. You're on the air. <clears throat> Speak up for us, please. Bob from Springfield. Go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, Jeff, uh, first question is to Jeff. Uh, can you tell me if I haven't seen uh, Robert Fashay's byline recently? Is he still right for the post? Absolutely. The second one was for uh, David. I wanted to know about Savage. Uh, I know he's an offensive threat. Is he also a defensive player? And I want to know about Wickenheiser. I know he was highly touted and I think first overall picked. Uh, why was he a free agent? Was this injuries or uh, was he not performing well? All right, Thank Bob you. Fashion, very quickly, I'll tell Bob that you were asking for him. Uh, with a long grind, maybe for Bob, he needed a few days off, but I'm sure he'll be back if he's not back up there tonight. All right. As far as Reggie Savage, uh, first and foremost, he's, uh, we draft him because of his offensive abilities. Now, again, as soon as you do that, uh, and us great uh, hockey experts, we talk to him and say, you know, you've got to improve your defensive game if you're going to play at the, the pro level. So what you're eventually looking for is hopefully a, a complete hockey player that can uh, be an offensive threat, which we, we hope that he can be, and not be a defensive uh, liability. In Doug, Wick Doug Wickenheiser's case, uh, Doug is a pretty much been known as a defensive player the last part of uh, his career in the National Hockey League. Uh, this year he was let go by the New York Rangers. I, I basically feel they didn't uh, think he could help them anymore. Uh, since that time he's gone to the Canadian Olympic team and uh, Dave King runs a very uh, high powered program uh, based on a lot of conditioning, a lot of uh, uh, European games and I think this has helped uh, Wickenheiser's game and I think it's renewed his interest to get back in the National Hockey League and that's why we've got him here today. Of course there's also a former association with uh, Brian Murray back with her John and Pats and those two had uh, some successes back in junior. Maybe some of that electricity might be rekindled here in Washington. Well you're always looking for the edge or a little bit of magic and if, uh, if you know that uh, championship that they won could uh, still be here uh, rub off a little bit uh, between Brian and Doug. Uh, more power to both of them. Let's continue on the phone lines. Take our next call. Hello John you're on the air. Go ahead, John. Hello? Yes, you guys got to get up here quickly. Let's go. You're on the air, John. Go ahead. All right, can we take our next call, Bill? Bob, you're on the air. Yeah, two questions for you. Uh, number one, long-term goal for uh, Beaupre. Looks like a great, great goaltender. And, uh, Dave, I want to know what your opinion would be on uh, uh, the incident with Jim John Schoenfeld and... Uh, with him going outside to the courts and uh, getting legal action for him to be able to come back in and coach. Well, as far as uh, Don Beaupre, I mean, we, we felt when we acquired him, he was a National League uh, goaltender. Uh, obviously, we're hoping that uh, he plays uh, real well, and then what that does is create a, a problem. I guess we'll have to buy a, a third net here for, for uh, practice, but uh, because of Pete's injury, he's getting a chance, and hopefully he'll do well. Uh, you know, as far as the, uh, the second question there, Lost my train of thought there. Well, I think his main thrust, though, is certainly the, the outstanding goaltending of Don Beaupre. And Beaupre, of course, uh, making a couple of key saves there in that first period. David, we've run out of time. Thank you for the visit. We invite you now to stay tuned. Second period action just ahead on home team sports. The Capitals trailing the Penguins by one. Introducing Coda Color Gold 100. I see your true colors shine. Coda-Color Gold 100 gives you the truest colors of any print film. Don't be afraid to live show. A new Coda-Color Gold. Stop by any People's Drugstore and stock up with Coda-Color Gold film. 
Do you need to save money? No matter what your station in life, it's smart to save money on automotive necessities at track off. Do you need to save time? Young men like myself like to spend their leisure time in places somewhat more romantic than an engine compartment. If you need low, low prices, low, low prices. if you need a warranty, warranty. if you need it, track's got it. Now just do what I do. If you want to play slots, leave the driving to us. Just grab a ticket and start to scratch. Instant fun means instant catch. New instant slots from the lottery. You get three chances to win instantly. Come on, people, get hot, get hot. Hit the jackpot with instant slots. See this crown shape? This means this is a red, delicious apple. All right, Melon. The most important thing is a nice golden color. No green in the webbing. When you're stacking oranges, it's just like laying bricks. You stack them so they're locked. That way, when a customer wants them, the giant we believe in helping people become the best they can be. Golden colors. And Carrie is the first step. Washington Capitals game coverage on home team sports is brought to you in part by Hardee's, we're out to win you over. And by Safeway, where you'll find the best selection of produce in town. Come see the difference. The Capitals trailing the Penguins 1-0 after one period of play here at a sold-out Capital Center. Mike Forns and Al Koken welcoming you back once again to our coverage here on home team sports. Well, it was a pretty intense first period, I thought. Washington sure had a lot of great scoring chances and had uh, more shots on goal, but uh, Pittsburgh gets the only goal of the period. Well, you credit Tom Barrasso for keeping the Penguins close as the Capitals were buzzing, but the frustrating part is Washington played a very nice first period, but Wade made one mistake, and the Penguins made them pay for it. Let's start out, though, by showing you the Capitals on our TWA shot chart, and you can see great pressure in front. Kortnall with four shots on goal. He was firing from everywhere. He had Pavanka, Miller, a couple of shots from Ridley as the Capitals were really testing Tom Barrasso and from great positions right there in that slot from the hash marks on in. They were in great position to shoot and they were doing it for Barrasso was the difference. At the other end for the Pittsburgh Penguins, Don Beaupre made some nice stops, but the Penguins didn't have as many great chances, and there was that one with Paul Coffey putting on goal that Beaupre had to reach back in the early moments to pull it out. Still, it was the one play, and you'll see when we show it on our telestrator just what the presence of this man, Mario Lemieux, means. Look how far out Rod Langway is to take him. Now, Ben Gustafson had come out as well and realizes with Langway back there, something is amiss, because you can see you got all the other capitals here. That means this whole area is wide open. And Randy Hillier, the defenseman, not known for his goal scoring, only one goal a year, is the guy to take advantage and make the move in here. This will be the spot where Paul Coffey will hit him with the pass and then watch what develops after that. Gustafson can't get back in time. Coffey makes the perfect lead pass to him. Now stop it right here. You see Beaupre totally reacts and goes down. Now what happens is Hillier's gonna misplay the backhand, but right here is a Dave Hannon, always on the spot. He comes in and is gonna take the puck and put it in the open net. Beaupre over commits just a bit early, but the presence of Mario Mew has drawn the Capitals completely out of their defensive rhythm. They've done such a good job of keeping everybody pretty well in check in that first period. But off that faceoff play, they all scramble at Lemieux, and Hillier is smart enough to take advantage, gets a great pass from Coffey, and Hannon does the rest. Brian Murray told Jeff Rimmer he didn't look for a real physical game tonight. I thought the first period was a little rougher than, uh, very rough. In fact, much similar to the one I told you about with New Jersey that they played the other night. I would think you'd have to expect a physical game with Pittsburgh, as we told you. 34 minutes of average and penalties, big players, guys who like to bump, guys who like to hit. To the Capitals' credit, they stood right up there with them, and I think that made for such an enjoyable first period. Crowd loved it. They were certainly into it. We'll see if that continues now or if the team's settled out a little bit. Both teams are back out on the ice. Let's check in downstairs now with Jeff Rimmer. 
Thanks, Mike Forns. And just before tonight's hockey game, had a chance to visit with former Baltimore Skipjack coach, and of course now the coach of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And we're talking of Gene Ubriaco. And Gene, uh, very, very candid with us. He says the Penguins would still like to improve themselves, particularly with another centerman. He'd like to have another centerman to spell Mario Lemieux. You're going to see Mario Lemieux double uh, teamed here and, and certainly double shifted throughout the hockey game and right down the stretch and into the playoffs, but they still would like to acquire another centerman. And one name that's prominently be mentioned, mentioned once again in trade talks is Dino Cicerelli of the Minnesota North Stars. Ubriaco smiled and said, boy, I'd love to have Cicerelli, another quality goal scorer on already a very offensive team. Defensively, they've got a defenseman for trade in Buskis, but uh, they still would like to improve themselves in that area. So the Penguins may be making some moves before the trading deadline. Let's go back upstairs now to Mike Forns and Al Koken. All right, Jeff, thanks very much to look at the statistical update from the first period of play and you can see the Capitals with a lot more shots and winning more than more than twice as many faceoffs. but Pittsburgh of course has the lead on that scoreboard. Well Detroit sure had their hands full with that Bob Probert situation haven't they and it all came to a head yesterday. Gene Ubriaco told me this morning that he had a special meeting with his players today about that situation. He told them if you've got anything like that going on in your life Get rid of it right now because you're not going to be a part of this hockey club. And he said, I'm demanding that from you. This is very important what we're doing, getting ready to go into this playoff stretch drive here. Don't foul it up. I think the message is pretty strong sent by the National Hockey League, and Bob Probert's going to find out just how strong. Pretty sad situation. And really, you, you know, you wonder now, is Jimmy DeVolano kind of debating with himself? Did he hold on to Bob Probert too long, or... You know, did you try and do the right thing too long? Because you've got to give a lot of credit to, I thought, the Detroit organization for sticking by him. Jim Devilano, the general manager, and Jock Damaris tried to bend over backwards to make Bob Probert a, a player once again. But the young man just refused to accept it and now finds his career possibly completely over. Play underway here in the second period. Still a half minute to go on the power play as Sundstrom is in the penalty box. Right away, the Caps able to clear it down twice, and here come the Penguins for a third attack. Langway gives Quinn a shove, and Beaupre flips it off the glass to the point. It's kept in by Zarly Zalapski. Now into the corner for Cunningworth. Back of the goal. Swept out front. Zalapski has it at the point. Sundstrom's out of the box, and the Capitals are back at full strength. At the left point, Coffee a shot, a save by Beaupre, it's lying behind him. Langway clears it, and now it's shot in, but the goal has been waved off. Knocked in with a high step. John Koharski was right there on the goal line to make the call. Lemieux is arguing it. But Koharski, very emphatic, says no goal. I think it'll be Randy Cunningworth is the guy who had to stick up. Now watch, this thing trickles behind Beaupre. Deflected a little bit there in front as Quinn comes through. Look at the play Langway makes, but as he throws it back out, it gets knocked down. Now watch Cunningworth. You see how he's over there to the uh, top right-hand corner of the screen, how he swatted it? They're saying when he got it, it was down below shoulder level. But as you mentioned, Mike, Don Kowarski does not hesitate. To be able to see it here, watch Cunningworth come in right there. That thing looked like it was just right had maybe above the shoulder, although if it's shoulder level, that's an awful difficult call to make. Don Kowarski without a moment's hesitation, and the Penguins did not argue too vehemently. Back in the Washington zone, here comes Larry Murphy starting out on the right wing. Leads it ahead to Mike Gartner. He finds Christian at the blue line. Walks in, drop pass for Gartner, and it's stolen, and Gartner trips over Dahlquist. And now the whistle blows, and it's just a case of the puck being forwarded with a gloved hand. That's the reason for a play being stopped. No penalty card here. Interesting to hear Jeff Rimmer talk about the Penguins running to trade a defenseman for more scoring. The <laughs> Dahlquist has certainly come on, and they feel they've got a little defensive depth in terms of bodies. You see with Dahlquist, I'm just with Koharski feeling Dahlquist got the puck as well, and he covers up with his hand and then shoved it forward to a teammate. Name a team right now in this league that isn't looking for a defenseman. You would think so, right? <laughs> and particularly you would think the Penguins giving up so many goals would be looking to just solidify their defense. But I guess taking the tack like L.A., just go, go, go. And see if you've got the big goaltender, a lot of goal scores, and try and win the shootout game. 
Penguins on the attack, but Gustafson slows him down. He puts the puck back in the corner. Now Christian skates behind the net, keeps it going around Kevin Stevens. Out front, a shot. Gustafson stops. Barrasso leaves it loose. Gartner swings and misses. And the Penguins come out, and it's cleared all the way down the ice now by Dave McElwain. Pittsburgh got away with leaving the puck lying right in front of the net there. Here's Gartner going to the corner after it, and as he hustles in, well, now they're going to rule that the Penguin player, no, it was Gartner who touched it. It's an offside pass, so the faceoff will come just inside the Washington blue line. I thought at first they were going to say that was icing, but it appeared as though Gartner had touched it, and that is correct. Well, Mike Gartner, along with Chris and Gustafson, with the chances, Gartner gets it out to Gustafson. He snaps the shot, has blocked the defense. Gustafson gets it back. Another big save by Barrasso, and then Gartner will have another whack at the bouncing puck. Misses, upended as he's falling down, and that is then cleared by the Penguins, but more pressure put forth by the Capitals, and again, in that sequence, always one key save, it seems like, coming up from Tom Barrasso. A couple whacks at it by the Caps, and then Barrasso gets a stick or a pad on the quality change. Here's Hillier up the left wing board. Starts out to Hannon. Mario Lemieux to Dave Hannon gets across the blue line. Into the corner, Hannon trying to center, and Sheehy sweeps it free. Pittsburgh keeps the pressure on. Hannon to the corner, back out to Coffey. Langway right on him, but the puck trickles into the corner and is sent behind the goal. Kelly Miller tries to freeze it against the sideboards and gets the job done with 17 minutes and 7 seconds left to go here in the second period. There's a break in the action. Pittsburgh leading Washington 1-0. Have an important message for you, Minike. I am not going to pay a lot for this muffler. At Minike, you get quality Everlast mufflers from just 1893 installed. I get all my hockey information right here on the Washington Capitol Stars and Stripes. Get your subscription now. Call 386-7000. Imagine this is all the heat you can afford to keep your family warm this winter. Now imagine that it's gone. Part of the sellout crowd enjoying the action here. Some folks not with us tonight. Billy and Kathy and Laughlin, their sons Bobby and Billy. Fans here want to say hello. Capital fans decked out tonight. Plenty of Penguin fans to be screaming with tonight. As this building is packed. Here's Larry Murphy in the corner. Feeds it out to Doug Wickenheiser, and he sends it past Sundstrom out to center ice. Captured now by Lemieux. On the right wing. Over to Jock Callender. He centers, but Lemieux couldn't get it. Now Coffey a blast from the left point, and Beaupre stops that. Here comes Sundstrom. Muffs the pass, but Francis Getty takes over. He cuts in wide of the net, tries to center a shot, and a goal! Peter Sundstrom! The game is tied. has been terrific all night for the Capitals. Here comes Francis Getty keeping the puck alive. Watch as he spins it out front. It deflects off there. I think the skates of Coffey and right onto the stick of Peter Sundstrom. A break for the Capitals much in the fashion that the Penguins got their first goal with the puck falling right into the hands of a guy who's got an open net. This time it's Sundstrom. He makes no mistake. The Caps' fourth line, Wickenheiser, Francis Getty, and that man, Peter Sundstrom, have tied this game up at one. Lou Francis Getty gets the assist at 3.25 of the second period. It's Peter Sundstrom's third goal of the season. The assist of Lou Francis Getty. Scott Stevens back at the blue line of Washington. Now throws it over to Murphy. He's out of the zone, and the Penguins, Cunnyworth, kicks it back to the red line. Taken there by Dale Hunter. Honeyworth steals and swats it out to center. Scott Stevens up the boards. Honeyworth takes over again for the Penguins. Delayed offside. Hunter clears the zone. It's waved off. Dahlquist bumped by Courtnall. And now Hunter into the Washington into the Pittsburgh zone. And that's swept away by Dan Quinn. Capital 
Smith come out. Larry Murphy starts the rush to center. Gives to Corknall. He's across the blue line. Drop pass. Bobby Gould shot. Block. Taken over by Murphy. Can't get it underway. And it's cleared back out to center up. Murphy to Scott Stevens. Leads it ahead for Christian. To Gartner. A shot. Save Barrasso. And the rebound sent by Zalatsky right between Barrasso's pads where he can keep it safely. And now there are four great places to go to cheer the Caps on to the Stanley Cup at the Capitol Center and all three Joe Theismann's restaurant locations. They're in Vienna, Bailey's Crossroads, and Old Town Alexandria. What could be better than enjoying fine American food in a relaxing, friendly atmosphere and watching the Cap games? Joe Theismann's restaurant, where good friends meet great food. Well, here comes Mike Gardner in off the bench and a line change, makes the move. He's got a little bit of an opening. He elects to just shoot from there. The puck is bouncing a little bit. It rises up. Catches Barrasso up around the midsection, and he squeezes in the pads together. Capitals 15th shot on goal. Gustafson on there now with Christian on the left, Gartner on the right. Felix and Langway back on the point. Here's Gartner turning it around. Walks to the net, but Barrasso stops it. The Penguins come out. Cullen works the center ice. Hit by Langway at the blue line. In the corner. The puck squirts behind the goal, and here's Rod Langway to come out. Out at center ice. Deneen, right side, gives to Cullen. Throws it into the Washington zone. A stolen puck and a quick score by Kevin Stevens. Kevin Stevens gets Pittsburgh their lead back at two to one as he steals a pass and beats Beaupre from right out in the slot area. Boy, this is a rare mistake by a guy who is known for his heady play. Ben Gustafson, he turns on the Jets and tries to make a pass and fans on it. There is Kevin Stevens beating Beaupre to the glove hand side. You can see the upset on the face of Gustafson. Stops fun, he's always so good with that puck. Just fans on it enough, and Beaupre was not settled. He ripped it right past, Stevens ripped it right past the glove. Two weeks ago, Kevin Stevens was playing with the Muskegon Lumberjacks in the International Hockey League. And there scored his third goal of the season. Tonight is only his ninth game played with the Penguins this year. 5.20, the time of the goal is unassisted for Kevin Stevens. And here he comes again, a backhander. And Beaupre stops that. Mike Ridley comes out to Grant Ledyard. Ledyard gets across the blue line. Walks in, a wrist shot blocked by Phil Bork. He sends it into the corner. Here comes John Cullen. Wrist shot goes wide. Chased by Hand into the corner. He throws it behind the net. Now Larry Murphy. Murphy can't clear it out. And here's a steal. Callender right in front. Boatwright sliding across. Showing the same goaltending form that he had in Los Angeles when he made a number of saves that way and kicks this one out. Kelly Miller leads it ahead now to Mike Ridley. Here's a wrist shot. Save made by Barrasso. And the Penguins come back. Mario Lemieux on the right wing. Drop pass for Hannon. Beats to the point. It's taken over by Lou Francisetti. Francisetti crashes at center ice into Jock Callender. Here comes Callender with the puck. To Lemieux. Back to Callender. Walks in the right wing. Tries to shift his way in front. Wickenheiser steals and starts back behind Francisetti. Now it's cleared into the Washington zone. Stevens has the puck in the corner. Brings it out to Francisetti at center ice. He dumps it back inside the Penguin zone, and Barrasso makes the save to Dan Quinn. Quinn brings it ahead. Sheehy shoots it back into the Pittsburgh zone. Capitals changing on the fly. Randy Hillier up the right wing boards for Quinn. Breaks to the blue line of Washington. Stevens tries to take it away, and the play is offside anyway. With 12.24 to go in the second period. Our first period 
Ranger Devil game going on tonight. Let's see if Jeff Rimmer's got an update for us. Jeff? Thanks, Mike. Yes, we do have an update from the Meadowlands. The New York Rangers got back into the hockey game to cut the deficit to two, but the New Jersey Devils have added two more, so it's now 6-2 in the second period. Edmonton improved play of late. They are leading the Winnipeg Jets in Winnipeg by one. That's a first period score. And uh, as far as our next action on home team sports, Colonial Athletic Association college basketball doubleheader action tomorrow at noon and two, and then seven and nine tomorrow night. Our next Caps telecast against the Rangers, and that's next Saturday night. Let's go back upstairs. Bob Froze and Sean Burke, the goaltenders in that Ranger Devil battle, and Grant Fuhrer against Bob Asensa in the Edmonton Winnipeg game. comes David Christian. Starts out to Chris Felix. At the blue line, it's taken away. And Dan Quinn throws it back into the Washington zone. Right. Here comes Quinn starting back. Tosses to the corner, and now Chris Felix starts out. Right wing side. Mike Gartner on the right wing. Taken away by Zalapsky in the corner. Here come the Penguins starting out. Right wing side pass now for Cunnyworth. Dumps it into the capital zone. Dave Christian back after. Mike Gartner trying to work it free. Here's Felix. Moves it along. Rod Langway takes over. He angles it off the boards for Gartner, but it's taken away by the Penguins. Langway back into the corner to pick it up. Snaps it out off the stick of Christian. It goes all the way down. Here comes Kevin Stevens starting back now for the Penguins. Brings it over to Scott Bukestad. His wrist shot block. Sheehy in the corner. Now over to Hunter. Dale Hunter has it behind the goal to Scott Stevens of the Capitals. Left side pass for Jeff Burtnall. Burtnall out to center ice. It bounces off the leg of Bobby Gould. Picked up now by Sheehy. He works to center. Gets across the line and throws it into the corner. He pass. Jukestad sends it out to Lemieux. He's to center. Into the Washington zone and Beaupre plays it behind the net for Sheehy. Penguins lead it 2-1. to one. Ten and a half minutes to go here in the second period. Scott Stevens works to center right. Inside the line. To the point for Gould. Over to Hunter. Tries to give it back to Gould. Here come the Penguins in the attack. Lemieux across the line. And Sheehy to beat. Flips it in front. Courtnall steals. And Jeff Courtnall comes back with Dale Hunter. Here's a delayed penalty call against Pittsburgh. It'll be against Dave Hannon. And there's the whistle to stop play. And Hannon's on his way to the box for interference at 10 minutes, one second of the second period. The Capitals have the power play. WMIX. Mix will get you up in a good mood with McCarthy in the morning. Pavloy trash roulette. Birthday wake-ups plus pilot Duke Brooks in the mix traffic copter. McCarthy in the morning on WMIX. Mix 106.5. Baltimore's best mix of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. First penalty of this period belongs to the Penguins' Dave Hannon, an interference call. He's coming up ice to try and slow down Dale Hunter of the Capitals. Did it right in front of Don Koharski. You can see as soon as it was done. Watch Hannon look back. You realize that it's a questionable situation. Watch him look back immediately. Sees that arm up from Koharski. Gives the Caps a chance to the man of them. Murphy rags the puck in his own zone. Now starts out with a pass to Ledger. Back to Murphy. Dumps it into the Pittsburgh corner. Murphy's in after as Dahlquist chasing him. Gustafson loses his edge. And Dahlquist sends it out with the help of Troy Loney. It goes all the way down the ice. A minute and a half to go in the Washington power play with Dave Hannon off the ice for interference. Murphy to Ledger at the blue line. Quinn takes it away and sends it all the way down the ice. Here comes 
Ledyard. Shoves it past Zalapsky into the corner. Takes it right in front of the net. And Hillier was there to swat it away from the goal. Now Gartner back in the corner for Ridley. Mike Ridley holds the puck to Murphy. A shot, save, rebound, shot. Barrasso got a piece of that too. Back into the corner. Here's Quinn. He turns and fires at the length of the ice. Barrasso another big save, but the Capitals continue to get Barrasso down and can't put anything oh. over him into the top of the net. Lemieux can't hold it. Deneen flips it in front. Scott Stevens plays it out to Dale Hunter. 20 seconds left on the Washington power play. Here's Larry Murphy. Over to Scott Stevens. Ahead to Courtnall. Capitals changing on the fly. Hunter goes to the corner after. Deneen behind the goal. Now Lemieux picks it up and sends it off the boards all the way down. That'll take care of the Pittsburgh penalty. Hannon ready to jump back out on the ice as Pittsburgh is at full strength. Chris Felix off the board. Here's Courtnall walking in front. A shot. But it was Gartner who finally sends in the tying goal. It's now 2-2. Well, the Capitals get another good bounce. It's a great play. Courtnell sets up Wickenheiser. He's all alone in front. It never gets there, though, to Wickenheiser. And this is where the bounce works, right over to Gartner. An excellent defensive play in front by the Penguins, but it a nice bounce over to Mike Gartner. You see Loney coming in there, back-checking. He sends it away from traffic. But boy, Gartner's the beneficiary, much like Peter Sundstrom was earlier in the period, and the Caps have tied the game at two. That's Gartner's 26th goal of the season. Doug Wickenheiser picks up an assist. And so does Jeff Courtnall. Big hit in behind the goal from Francis Getty. Centering pass, Wickenheiser sends it wide of the net. Now it's sent off the right wing board by John Cullen. He leads it ahead too far for Kevin Stevens. She he goes back to the corner. Wickenheiser's into the throw a hit. Here's Peter Sundstrom starting out to Rod Langway. Langway up to center right. Dumps it across the line. Francis Getty in after. He's in there to hold. Gord Deneen against the corner boards, and that stops play. The time of that goal for Gartner at 12-19 of the second period. Mike Gartner now with two goals, three assists, and five points in his last three games played, and he's done very well against Pittsburgh this season. Tonight is only Gartner's fourth game played against the Penguins. Remember, he was hurt there during a couple of those games and didn't appear. This is his fourth goal, three assists, seven points in four games. The Capitals have quite a few of their big gunners doing well against Pittsburgh, which tells me, and like you said before, you can't get into a shootout with this team. Gustafson has scored well against them. Gartner has scored well against them. Ridley, Courtnall, those are the top four scorers for the Capitals against the Penguins. They've all had great totals, but it hasn't been enough to win. quite a few of those men have come in that 8 nothing win, too. Here's a turnaround shot by Ridley right on, and a save is made, and now it's loose in the goal mouth. A shot blocked in the goal crease. Red light comes on. The play's still on, and now Koharski blows the whistle. But the red light was on a lot earlier than when Koharski blew the whistle. So he's going to have to check in with a goal judge, and the Capitals feel that they've been awarded a goal. Well, this is a strange one, Mike, because Koharski never made the signal, but it looks like it's Roger Reinke back there in that goal. And he did pop it on. Now, Gord Brassiker is talking to Koharski. Mike Ridley put the arm up in celebration, and now Scott Stevens kind of reacting. Well, I guess he's trying to decide who's the one who gets it. number 20. Giving it to Mavanka. gives Washington the lead, 3-2 to two for the first time in the game. We watch it, this thing does disappear, and a Pavanka bats it, 
It hits one of the defensemen, and it pops, I thought, right behind him. You see where Lemieux's stick is? He's reaching behind the net, or behind the goal line, rather, to pick it out. Look where he is. Look where that stick goes. That would mean the puck is behind the goal line already, and that's when the red light comes in. But you see how you can imagine how Koharski had a tough time seeing it. Maybe this angle will give you a little more graphic example. But watch Pavanka dig this puck out, fight away from the check of Hillier, reach down, swing around, and bat it in. You see where Lemieux is. He's fishing that thing out from behind the goal line. Gene Ubriaco is now yelling at Gord Brossaker. Well, Brossaker helping the referee there. Yeah. Ubriaco wants to take a timeout to talk to the official. Well, look, and also you can see, see how Lemieux is obliterating the sight line of Don Koharski? That's why it's such a tough call for Koharski. And that's why the goal judge and the linesman had great influence. And now Ubriaco taking a timeout. This is very interesting. He is furious. Who does he want to yell at, though? Well, you've got to give Gordy Brossaker a lot of credit there for coming to the aid of his fellow official. He helped Don Koharski, who did not have the good sight line, as you point out. Okay, that's certainly within the realm of his responsibilities to come right in there and inform the official of what he saw, and he did that immediately. That's great lining work. Let's try and take another look at this and see if we can improve the picture a little bit, blow it up, and before Gene Ubriaco blows up, we'll try and get the picture. <laughs> Expand it a little bit and try and get a more definitive look at where Mary Lemieux was, and more importantly, where that puck is. Now watch Lemieux's stick. Now where he's picking that puck up, that's got to be completely past the goal line. see him pull it right out couldn't see the puck in there because of the goal covering but you could sure see him bring it out of the net couldn't you that gives Washington the lead three to two Mike Ridley dumps it back inside the Pittsburgh zone I didn't know they could do that to a picture did you I made that a lot bigger so we could see that that was great it's like putting it under a magnifying glass here's Kelly Miller in the corner Pavanka hit behind the goal. The puck comes out to Lemieux. He starts ahead. Three on two break for Pittsburgh. Jock Callender across the blue line. Brings it over to Coffey. Slap shot from outside or from inside the line is now blocked out of the zone. And Callender drives it right back in. Here's Mike Ridley. Washington three, Pittsburgh two with five and a half minutes to play here in the second period. Murphy over to Pavanka. Deneen takes over. Starts back to Calendar. Calendar on the right wing. Brings it to Zalapki. He tries to center and Scott Stevens clears it out of the zone. Penguins dump it right back in and here comes Sheehy out on the attack. Bounces it to center ice. Courtnall takes over. He and Bork collide, and Courtnall looked like he was trying to play the puck. But as Bork goes down, Courtnall gets called for hooking. That'll put Pittsburgh up okay. with a man advantage. There's a break in the action with a score. The Capitals three and the Penguins two. Toyota 4x4. The bottom line 89 numbers versus Ford Ranger. After one year, Toyota 4x4s will save you up to $1,400 in costs over Ranger. Over five years, you'll save over $2,200. A few reasons why Toyota trucks carry a higher customer satisfaction rating than Ranger, making Toyota the number one 4x4 for the ninth straight year. There is one Toyota number that's not quite as big as Ranger, and that's the bottom line. Hooking the call to Jeff Cortnall, 15.04 is the time of the penalty. See Cortnall getting the stick up higher on the neck of Phil Bork. Not as innocent as it looked at first glance, but it's got a lot of lumber in there. Here comes Coffee on the rush. 
Brings it ahead to center ice. Drives it back inside the Washington zone. Here's Quinn to the corner. Now to Cunningworth. Back to Dan Quinn. Cunningworth from the corner all the way back to the point. Kept in there by Coffey. Sheehy plays it off the boards but right to Paul Coffey. Turned over Zalapski a shot. Delayed penalty call coming against Washington. Penguins keep the play going. Here's Quinn with it behind the net. Handled by Gustafson. And I think Langway is going to be called here for cross-checking. And he wants to know why Randy Cunningworth is not going to get called for a little mugging that Cunningworth did on Langway before the penalty was whistled out. Of course, Langway returned a pretty good shot to Cunningworth and maybe even got the better of that exchange, but it's going to be a previous infraction, a cross-checking call, and the Pats now... It's going to be five on three hockey for the Penguins. Langway upending Quinn, sending him down and a little bit into Beaupre. That's what's going to get the call. You can see really a much of a cross check. It looks like he kind of bumped him head on, but Koharski quick to make that penalty call, and 112 remains in the court and all call. The full two minutes now on Langway, and it's going to be Sheehy, Stevens, and Gustafson. Langway doesn't take many penalties, but he gets a call here. That's his 59th minute. Really not a large number for a defenseman who logs the kind of time that Rod Langway does. He's played a good game tonight, too. Langway's been really moving out there, moving the puck and moving bodies around. He gets called here, cross-checking at 15.52. Penguins with a two-man advantage. Right away, it's sent all the way down the ice by Sheehy. across the blue line and offside all the way. That really surprises me seeing Paul Coffey make a play like that. You learn that in minor hockey. Don't pass the puck. Don't stick handle with it right at the blue line. And Lemieux was anxious waiting for it, but at the same time, Coffey had plenty of time to make that pass. Here's Gustafson, brings it back to Scott Stevens again. Of course, you win that Norris Trophy, you're expected to do everything right, all the time. Here's Cullen chasing the puck, and it comes up the boards and outside the zone. Now Stevens gets across the line. Kevin Stevens, a shot saved by Boatwright. And it's cleared all the way down. That was the only time the Penguins really had gained the zone. The Capitals did an amazing job of forcing Pittsburgh to kind of dump the puck in a little bit, not really letting them completely gain the zone clean. Only 10 seconds left in the court call penalty. It's under a minute remaining in the lineway call. Sheehy comes up with it, slaps it the length of the ice. Courtin all out of the box. Langway's the only one in there now. Here comes Quinn. Last shot blocked by Sheehy. Into the corner. Cunningworth nailed to the backboard by Stevens. And Gustafson clears it out to center right. Bobby Gould is on with Kelly Miller. Cunningworth back again to Zalapski. 20 seconds left in the Langway penalty. Capitals kill this off. The crowd is really going to let the Penguins hear about it. And the Capitals did a good job they did. Here's a centering pass. Cunningworth puts it on net. Beaupre makes the save with nine seconds remaining in the call. Some fans starting to celebrate already. You know, it's really the key, Mike, is that five on three. The Penguins got nothing going. And even if they didn't score with that five on three, they certainly had a chance to get the momentum going, to have the capital spinning, have the Caps defenseman running around. But for the most part, they didn't. Now it's a pretty well-rested unit out there. Stevens remains. Gustafson goes off. Sundstrom and Miller out on the ice now on the forward lines. So, you know, Miller heads back to the bench as Wickenheiser comes out there. Got a guy now in Doug Wickenheiser, who's also a pretty decent face-off man. 
but for three guys, with three guys on defense, and you can force a team that has the five skaters to kind of dump in and not be able to penetrate the zone where you really take advantage of the extra two attackers. Good work done also by Neil Sheehy using that reach. He stayed out there and separated himself from everybody to keep close to Lemieux. They tried to set up Lemieux and Sheehy cut off that pass and got the Capitals with the puck cleared. Scott Stevens, the Capitals assist leader, came into the game with 48 and already helped out on the Michael Pavanka goal, which put Washington into the lead 3-2. to two, So he's got 49 on the season now. And the Devils came back to score two goals in the second period. Shanahan and Loisel. So this gives them a six two lead over the Rangers. Here's Lemieux back at the point. Fork a shot just goes wide. Bounces over the net out in front. And it's cleared to the point. Kept in. Lemieux to the corner tries to center. Stevens blocks it. Langway's back out there. The Capitals are at full strength. Hand and fires. Beaupre to save. Rebound. They can't get it to Lemieux. Langway helps cover it with Stevens and the puck forwarded with the glove hand. Play is stopped and the Capitals get out of the jam. Well, I've got to see this one again. Did Callender just miss fire or did he actually try and get it to Mary Lemieux? when he had Beaupre at his mercy. Is this another case of overpassing the puck? We'll try and see it when we come back. Can we check in with Jeff Rimmer? Thanks, Al. Updating our home team sports scoreboard for you. The Rangers trailing by four. That's after two periods of the Meadowlands. Edmonton and Winnipeg are tied 2-2. And the Capitals' number one draft choice today officially signing with the Caps, Reggie Savage, our second intermission guest. So stay tuned for that. Let's go back upstairs. All right, thanks, Jeff. Try to take a look at it. There's number 14. That's Callender. Got the puck. Springs it up front. I guess he just tries to make that pass over to Lemieux. Thought he could have tucked it right under there with Beaupre down. I guess he thought the long reach of Mary Lemieux open at the side of the net would have worked better. The break for the Cats. Beaupre finally got rid of the green goalie pads, didn't he? <laughs> Still wearing his Minnesota pads. And his earlier outing with the Capitals out in Los Angeles. Now he's breaking in the newer ones for the Washington Capitals colors and with the skipjack colors. They're funny about their equipment. I guess the colors don't bother them at all. They just want to make sure they don't stop that puck. Solid. Here's Gustafson working it ahead to Francis Getty. He sends it across the line. A minute 35 to go in the second period. Francis Getty throws a whale of a hit at Bork, misses him, and crashes off the glass. And now the Penguins clear it back into the Washington zone. As Bork was lucky he didn't get in on that hit Francis Getty just threw. Here comes Wickenheiser. Louis only grazed him. Drop pass. Francis Getty with the puck to the corner for Sundstrom back of the net. Francis Getty digs in behind the goal trying to get it. But it's cleared by Deneen out to Bugstad. He brings the center ice for Kevin Stevens to the Washington line. Ledger pokes it into the corner and now goes back to pick it up with a minute remaining in period two. Barrasso keeps it going up the boards for Dave Hayman. He's hit by Sundstrom. Kept in by Larry Murphy. Now over to Ledger. The slap shot hits the crossbar. Back to the point for Murphy. A drive and a save as Barrasso just deflects it wide. Now it's Sundstrom in the corner. He's knocked down on the play. The puck put to Gustafson, but Hannon sweeps it free. Christian behind the net. Takes it into the corner. 29 seconds to go in the period. Gustafson held off as Christian battles in the corner and now moves the puck. And it's sent up the right wing boards for Hannon. He flips it out to center right. Lemieux has it. Over to Troy Loney. Back into the Washington zone. Larry Murphy, a pass ahead for Christian. 
off. He knocks it down, and now Christian takes it away. He feeds Gustafson. Hooked off his skates at the blue line. There's going to be a penalty to Randy Hillier for hooking with only two seconds left in the period. The Capitals will start with a full head of steam when they come out for period three. They'll have the man advance. Take a look at it in the transition game. The Caps up ice. Gustafson with the puck. Watch till you just reach out with that stick and the knee. Sticks the leg, the stick, and the knee out. Sends Gustafson flying. Two seconds, as Mike mentioned, remaining in the penalty. So, unless the Caps can literally get the quick shot from this draw, they will have plenty of time to operate and open up possibly a two-goal lead at the opening moments of the third period. They'll try to do it with a man advantage here, not only on the penalty call, but they're also going to pull Beaupre out of the net. Here's that hit that Francis Getty threw. He just grazed Bork, but where the people in the first row got woke up, didn't they? <laughs> Beaupre's out of the net, and a sixth attacker out there now. Gartner, Hunter, Murphy, Ridley, Cortnall, and Stevens. With only two seconds left, the Capitals will try to sneak one in here. They get the draw, but time runs out. Shots on goal in the second period. For Pittsburgh, nine, a two-period total of 16. And for Washington, 13, a two-period total of 25 shots. Scoring in period two. Sundstrom for the Capitals. Kevin Stevens for the Penguins. Then Gartner tied it up, and Pavanka put the Caps in the lead, three to two. More hockey coverage coming up after these messages on the home team sports television network.